The only national anthem that I remember. I don't know the American one, I cannot remember. The Chilean one either, and I spent 15 years in either. But the Venezuela say, Gloria al bravo pueblo que el yugo lanzó. <laughs> In Venezuela, I did drawing, painting. I started in Venezuela, really. I started sculpture in Chile. I do my work at this uh, primitive, you can call it, because I'm not sophisticated. I never learned how to throw. I never won it, because it's competition in the field. So I work in gesso, plaster, and clay. So I was a reversing. I invented that thing. I don't know, that's what the teacher said, that I invented my own thing. Oh, I have to go back in my life story. We lived Two brothers, my father and I, in one room. And I have a division where my session was. So I was miserable and I was ambitious. So I wanted to get out of that life. Well, I never got married, really. He was a military in Venezuela. And he got pregnant with my son. So it's very bad thing to go with a man and have kids and don't be married. You are out of the society. I have to run away from my house. He couldn't find me, my father. So he put the other in the radio to trying to find me. That was uh, the worst thing that you can see. Get pregnant with a married man and single woman. Oh, that's X, 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 X. So I have to run to Chile. So in Chile, we were, of course, underground too. All his friends in Chile in those days. It was like a society of married men who has a lover, and they got together. So I belong to that class. <laughs> You, you won't believe it. it, was a real thing, but it sounds like a soap opera. And I accepted because that was my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my kids didn't know because they were too little. You know, I left all the art because my life was in more important than the art. In those days, artists don't leave anything. I wasn't enough to support me. My ex-husband or whatever convinced me that I couldn't go to an art class, so he let me go to that. I started going painting and I got a prize. Then I saw an ad in the paper that a professor from the Yale University was going to the Catholic University. And they didn't require anything, so I applied. And I got there. Sewell Silman, my first great teacher that I have. So I got in the arts and I got very good reviews, excellent student. So, of course, that put my ego up there. So I say, oh, this guy from jail thinks I'm good. I always wanted to learn something else. So after that, they sent another from jail that was a sculptor, Norman Calver. I fall in love with him because he was so handsome. And I become his best student too. I, that's when I started sculpting. They made me think that I was worthwhile. I don't know, they might know something. So they started mentioning about my name. I was established as like a good student there. Then they said the third one, Paul Harris. And I start following his way of too. And I start doing some weird stuff. They have a show at the end of the year of the students that they have to present their work and that. And the dean of the art school called me and said, Magdalena, don't you think you shouldn't show that thing? That's not for here. Well, it was some legs plastered with gel, so but those times in Chile it was strange. Anyway, so he said that I should no, sure. And then I debate, just like I always have those moments that you have to debate what to do. Should I pull it or not pull it? I say, he's my teacher and I'm studying as a captain, so he should go. Paul Harris, oh, he prized me in the art in America. He said, the most daring sculptor in Chile because of that. <laughs> Port Chester, New York. His so name is Michael. I came to the scholarship, the scholarship was ended. We met and he wanted me to marry me and go to Pennsylvania with him. I said, I wanted to go back to Chile to see my kids. I was very lost. Then I decided to come back to America. So we got involved. So I had my space to do my plaster thing that I used to do. His father rented a place for us to work. He was a good businessman. He knew I was an artist from Chile. We had the sales twice a year. So that was my school in ceramics, painting, 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 to make the, meanwhile I have to take the, the kid, the house, everything. Even Michael used to complain that they turned the, the art in a factory. That was true, in a way, because we, we, he produced and we had to make the money. 
Then I started reading about the ancient Aztecs. You know, they have such a big culture. I started studying with all kinds of books. And my father-in-law bought a collection of the Japanese, all the antiques. So I copy everybody. And my daughter, Luisa, was with me to go to libraries, getting all the books and cartoons. Then I started comparing, tra training my eye, you know. And I see the Aztecas, they're all cartoons. And then I start mixing them up, my own thing. I didn't have a teacher, that's true. I was my own teacher. Well, I proved myself. Michael used to throw big pots. I don't know, we have an argument for something and he allowed me to do that. And I did. And the father got impressed. He loved it. So she's going to work and you do the pots. So I was happy to start that thing. So anything that I was available, I used it there. Everything. My neighbors, uh, my family. It's a big surface. His mother's there, his father, everybody. Celia Cruz, you know who Celia Cruz is? Yeah. Washington, Bolivar. But I put Washington in the bottom and Bolivar in the top because one day we're fighting. So I put <laughs> oh, I also always use my work and my expression or whatever I feel like. Uh -huh. My story always, my father when I was a child, it's all about my life. I'm very selfish. My family in Venezuela, and my past. There is all the neighbors, everybody. Most of them are dead. So all the women walking the dog, my neighbor across the street, some of them are alive. My daughter, everybody's there. Those days we, we, we didn't have any collector or anything, so we have social security, I think. So. And I have to work. It's a struggle most of the time. The more you have to cope with life or whatever. And then I go painted and I forget some of my life. So it's a therapy. Oh my God, that's a terrible thing, you know, my life is such a screw up. <laughs> I mean, it's a soap opera, how can I give you advice? They can teach me, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's the, the wrong thing with being famous, that they think you're an example. But in a way, you are and you are not, because you might be saying the wrong things to the kids. You know? I would tell you that, use it like the therapy, if they want to do it.